Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Merry Christmas. Welcome uh, virtually to our Christmas Mass, especially for the parishes of Assumption, St. Alphonsus, and St. Angela, but for anywhere from, uh, from which you may be watching. I am Father Maurice Restivo, the pastor. I have this incredible privilege of being the pastor of this family of parishes. And on behalf of the whole pastoral team, Deacon Gerard Charette, Deacon Paul Bezer, Father Leo Walsh, Father Stephen Huber, and Father Christian Amogu, I'd like to, and all of our staff, I'd love to wish you a very happy, holy, safe, and healthy Christmas. These are such strange times, we all know that. Uh, we appreciate your, during this time of shutdown, we appreciate your continued financial support. It has been incredibly important and appreciated in order to keep our doors open and keep us present to you. At the end of the uh, broadcast, you see a link that you can click on to donate. It takes you to the Family of Parishes page. Know that when you click there, you choose your parish and 100% of the, of the money that you might give will go to the parish that you choose. So we, we thank you for your generosity. We again welcome you. We wish we could have you inside overflowing churches of people. Uh, hopefully next year we can do that. In the meantime, we do it virtually and know that all of you are in our prayer. May the Christ child whose birth we celebrate tonight fill you with joy, with life, and with hope. Good evening and Merry Christmas. My name is Chris Bergeron and welcome to the online Mass for the Windsor Heritage Catholic Family of Parishes. Tonight we celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. Our celebrant is Father Stephen Huber. Oh, come let us 
does adore him, cries the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we gather virtually on this night, we celebrate the coming of Christ, the light of the world in the flesh, and we are reminded and we recall his birth two millennia ago. We began our celebration this evening by asking God's blessing upon the nativity scene that we have in front of us, that our peering upon this image of Christ, newborn in the manger, may remind us of God sending his Son for our salvation. And so we pray, God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger, and may it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, Son of God, you were born of the Virgin to become one like us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of Man, you heal our weaknesses. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, first born of the Father, you gather all humanity together as one family. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are 
God, the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. <clears throat> Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. <clears throat> For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. <clears throat> his, his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> God. A responsorial psalm. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works amongst all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad, and the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult, and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. <clears throat> Rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiet and piety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, 
and godly while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem, redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place to which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. was the night before Christmas, and all through the town, people wore masks that covered their frown. The frown had begun way back in the spring, when a global pandemic changed everything. They called it Corona, but unlike the beer, it didn't bring good times. It didn't bring cheer. Airplanes were grounded, travel was banned, 
Borders were closed across air, sea, and land. As the world entered lockdown to flatten the curve, the economy halted and folks lost their nerve. From March to July, we rode that first wave. People stayed home, they tried to behave. When summer emerged, the lockdown was lifted, but away from, from caution, many folks drifted. Now it's December and cases are spiking. Wave two has arrived, much to our disliking. It's true that this year has had sadness aplenty. We will never forget the year 2020. And just around the corner, the holiday season. But why be merry? Is there even one reason? To decorate the house and put up the tree, who will see it? No one but me. But outside my window, the rain gently falls, and I think to myself, let's deck the halls. So I gather the ribbon, the garland, and bows, and as I play these old carols, my happiness grows. Christmas is not canceled, and neither is hope. If we lean on each other, I know we can cope. Christmas is not canceled, and neither is hope. In this year where we have seen so much darkness and so much suffering, it is very fitting that the first words that we hear from Scripture on this Christmas Eve night are words from the prophet Isaiah, where he says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shown a message of hope, a message that God sends light into the midst of our darkness to bring us healing and strength. And on this Christmas night, we celebrate him doing just that through the birth of his son, through the celebration of the nativity. And it is this son that Isaiah foretells. And I think for many of us, we might look at this passage and we see all of these wonderful names that the Messiah is called. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If you're musically inclined like me, you probably hear the chorus, For unto us a child is born from the Messiah running through your head right now. And as we hear all of these words, our mind might think of some child being born in a spectacular hall, being born to a king and a queen, and the message going out to all of the other lords and princes in that land saying, come, rejoice with us, for this child is born. How different it is then when we look at our gospel and we see that this child is born not in some royal hall, but in a stable. And the message doesn't go out first to these princes and lords, but to a band of lowly shepherds. And to the cynic, they might look at this and say, well, what's going on here? This can't be the Son of God. Why would God choose someone who is so lowly for the salvation of the world? But that's precisely the point. Throughout all of our scripture, throughout all that we read, God always chooses the ones who are weak in the eyes of the world to bring shame to those who are strong. And even though Jesus is the Son of God, even though he has all power from his Father, he still comes to us as a child born of a humble virgin in the small town of Bethlehem. This, brothers and sisters, is the reason for our hope. And this child is the light 
that shines in our darkness is the light that brings us hope. If you've ever been to the Easter Vigil, you know that there's a very powerful moment right at the beginning where the church is in complete darkness and the priest and deacon bring the newly lit candle inside to the church from the Easter fire. And in that moment, you realize how bright one flame is and how bright that light of Christ is piercing through the darkness. And dare I say that now we are desperately in need of that light more than ever. We are desperately in need of some measure of hope to cling to that this pandemic will not be forever, that despite rising case numbers, despite new news every day that seems bad, there is hope, there is light on the horizon. And I think it's so hard to find that hope because we look all around us and we see people who for one reason or another are knocking down that hope. We might have one little reason that we're trying to cling to and they come to us and say, oh, you've got your little reason for hope. How cute. Here's five reasons why you shouldn't be hopeful. And to them, and to respond to them, we can take comfort in words that were spoken by St. John the 23rd in his opening address to the Second Vatican Council, when he says, it sometimes happen that we hear certain opinions in the world that disturb us, opinions which are expressed by people who even though they are fired with a commendable zeal, they lack sufficient prudent and judgment in the evaluation of events. They see nothing but calamity and disaster in the present state of the world. And he goes on to say that we feel that we must disagree with these prophets of doom who are always forecasting worse disasters as though the end of the world were at hand. Because present indications are that the human family is on the threshold of a new era we must recognize here the hand of God, who as the years roll by is ever directing humankind's efforts, whether they realize it or not, toward the fulfillment of the inscrutable designs of his holy providence, wisely arranging everything, even adverse human fortune, for the church's good. If we remember that, that God is present with us, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of this time when we cannot gather, then we can find the strength to continue to endure, to cling to hope, and to truly see the light of Christ coming into the world. May we, this Christmas, even when we cannot gather physically together, May we still find strength from our Lord to be present to others, to build up their hope, and to realize that our God is with us and he does walk with us every single day of our lives. My brothers and sisters, as we profess our faith this night, the church asks us to genuflect at the words of the incarnation. For tonight we recall that the word truly has become flesh and dwells among us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the glory of Emmanuel, God with us, we implore our God to fill the world with his divine light and dispel the darkness of a suffering world. For the church, with renewed joy and hope to be a witness of the good news of, salva of the salvation to the whole human race. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For tranquility in our troubled world, <clears throat> so that the darkness of pandemic, poverty, war, and injustice be replaced by the light of peace and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work for the benefit of others during these holy days, medical professionals, police, firefighters, and essential workers to know the glory of the Lord, as did the shepherds at work on the first Christmas night. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical or mental anguish, to be filled with hope and trust in the fulfilled promise of God manifested in the infant Messiah. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's favor to rest on those who have died and as they live forever in God's kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us remember in a special way our prayers at this Mass, the soul of Teresa Plant, who passed away early this morning. May she be welcomed into God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of our salvation, we rejoice this night in the birth of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer and heal our world, that we may be moved by the Spirit to lead all people in singing your praise and proclaiming your glory forever and ever. Amen. Silent tonight, O oh, holy night, all is calm, all is bright round yon virgin, mother and child. Oh, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, Oh, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah Christ the Savior is born Christ 
the Savior is born. Silent night, oh, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. We Thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at Thy birth. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the grace of the glorious name for good and beautiful soul. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that, as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, 
which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer a sign of peace to those with us in our homes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of 
of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace behold the lamb of god Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
When Christ was born on night divine, on night, on night Before I was ordained, I had a tradition of singing O Holy Night at our parish mass every year. So it truly was a blessing to have had it sung tonight. So I want to thank Arnell and Mike Ricketts for providing our music for us this evening for this live streamed liturgy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by the participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And again, on behalf of Father Maurice and all of our staff here at the Windsor Heritage Catholic Family of Parishes, I want to wish you all a blessed and merry Christmas celebration. Our celebrations may be different this year, but remember, Christmas is not canceled and hope is not canceled either. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all you nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adore, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veil in flesh the Godhead see, hail incarnate day tree. 
please as one with us to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel, heart the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn.